This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's SmackDown time. We have the 2016 Razer Blade here, 14-inch gaming laptop, NVIDIA GT. X 970M graphics. And here we have the Dell XPS 15, otherwise known as the Infinity Edition with the near bezel-less display. NVIDIA GTX 960M graphics. Both of these have Intel quad-core i7 6700HQ 2.6 gigahertz CPUs with turbo boost at 3.5 gigahertz. And 16 gigs of RAM, I, the, the Dell is available actually with a variety of different RAM configurations. We'll talk about that a little bit. And fast PCIe SSDs. Obviously, there's a size difference here. First and most important decision. Some people have a strong feeling about this. 14-inch laptop. For some of you, that's like, great. Wow, I like it smaller. I like it lighter. Versus 15.6-inch, more screen real estate. What are you looking for? What size laptop, particularly what size screen do you want? Keep that in mind when you make your decision here. Both of these are pretty light. Uh, this is a 4.5 pound laptop, the XPS 15. So it's phenomenally light. It depends to a certain extent on how you get it configured, which battery size, which screen resolution, that sort of thing. Uh, this one here weighs 4.25 pounds. So they're pretty close, honestly, in weight. Now screen, there's a difference here. And we'll turn them around so we can look at those screens now. So here we have two pro apps and gaming laptops that, boy, anybody would love to have with a price tag to match. Let's talk about that first. The Dell XPS 15 is a pricey machine, but you know Dell, they always offer myriad configurations, including ones that are so low you probably wouldn't want to buy it. Like, you're not going to buy a Core i3 with no dedicated graphics probably in an XPS 15, though some businesses might to issue to their employees. So we're going to talk primarily about the configuration that would match the Razer Blade. The Razer Blade is a high-end laptop with only high-end configurations. In fact, the only difference is the capacity of the SSD drive when you buy a Razer Blade. The 1999 model has a 256 gig PCIe SSD and the 2199 model ups that to 512 gigs. It has a QHD plus 3200 by 1800 glossy touchscreen sharp IGZO. Now Dell, here again, we have choices, but we're going to focus on the high-end option. They have the 1920 by 1080 matte display, uh, sharp IGZO, and then they have the 4K display that's glossy with touch. And that one has high color gamut. It, it achieves 95% of Adobe RGB and exceeds sRGB. Now this particular unit right here is the 1080p model, so you're not looking at the glossy screened model in 4K resolution. But again, since we're trying to go with light configurations, we'll talk mostly about the 4K Dell option. If you've watched my review of it, you, you know how I feel about it. It's a shock and awe display. It has really nice contrast. It does have a colorful display. It's quite bright. It achieves a little over 300 nits for the 4K display. But the color balance is not real good. The white point is a little hard to calibrate it correctly. Now, if you're mostly a content consumer, you probably might lean towards the XPS 15 4K display for that very good contrast and very, very bright look, even if the whites are more towards the blue. If you're a professional photo or video editor, or you're just somebody who's used to, say, using one of the Retina Macs, where you're used to that kind of really good color calibration from the factory and proper white points, you might lean towards the razor blade. Both of them have some off-angle color shifting going on. I, I don't use my computer at these bizarre angles, do you? So I, I know people do notice it, but really, if you're using it in any normal position, it's probably not going to bother you. If you're sharing a screen with somebody else, it possibly could. And both of these do support touch, if we're talking about the 4K display for the Dell, that is. The most important part, really, between these two displays is which size you prefer, 14-inch versus 15.6-inch. If it's your main machine, the 15.6-inch screen size is really comfy, it's pretty nice, it's pretty big. The 14-inch feels a little bit more like it's moving towards that Ultrabook territory. Both of these have backlit keyboards. The Dell is backlit in your everyday normal white. The Razer Blade, of course, has that chroma keyboard, RGB, LED, any color combination you want, Starfield simulations, Firelight, all sorts of things. So if you're a gamer, you're probably going to be into that. You can have the highlighted WASD keys, different programmable patterns for different sorts of games. It's pretty cool. Or you could just set it to white when you go to work, for example, and you don't want to look like Joe or Jane Gamer. 
Both of these have 1.3 millimeters of key travel. It's not a whole lot, but the Razer Blade wins here. It has a much more comfortable keyboard. It doesn't feel that short travel as far as short travel keyboards go. The damping is just right. You don't bottom out. The Dell is it feels more harsh when you type on it, and I find I make more typos, where the razor blades actually become one of my favorite keyboards, quickly enough. The trackpads on both of these are quite good. They use Microsoft Precision trackpad drivers. I do prefer the feel on the razor blades more. It feels very, the, as close to the Mac as you can possibly get, which most people seem to think of as a good thing. Precise, reliable, and nice touch surface on it. The Dell is pretty darn good, but it, it particularly is a problem that it picks up fingerprints oils, gets mucky, gets less precise. Overall, winner there. And while we're talking about things on the deck, these are the stereo speakers for the Razer Blade, and they're quite good, actually. They're fairly loud, they're fairly full, and obviously they're facing up and kind of at you, which is a better thing. Dell put theirs underneath, and they have plenty of volume, but they don't sound particularly pleasant. They're a little bit harsh. They can buzz a little bit sometimes. Some of that was driver issues, which Dell's worked on rectifying. They're decent, but they're not as good as the Razer Blades. Now, in terms of footprint difference, you can see how close these really are. Dell really did an amazing job of making their machine compact thickness about the same. Fit and finish, both high-end machines, both well done. The Razor Blade 2016, just like the 2015, honestly, same casing, a little bit more boutique. I mean, it's hard to find a flaw with this. It's so perfectly put together and quality control is generally pretty good on the products. You won't get one that has a bum space bar. Sorry, Dell, had to mention that. And, and some other problems. I, it, it's quite good. Dell's no slouch though, and also this one thing that's nice is it might show a little bit of dust, but it doesn't really show fingerprints much, which the Razer does. Now the inside of the Dell does, that cold carbon fiber area, that picks up fingerprints, but the outside, not so much. In terms of upgradability, both of these have removable bottoms. You can see the screws there to take that guy apart, and likewise here, your Torx T5 screwdriver will be your friend to take these apart. Both of these have M.2 slots for PCIe SSDs. They come with PCIe NVMe SSDs, acronym land there. And that just means the faster kind of SSD that's on the market today. So with both of these, you could upgrade the SSD. With both of these, you can access the battery if you need to replace it at some point in the future. Let's mention the fact that Dell is a huge company that has a huge parts department, and it's pretty easy to just order parts for a Dell. With Razer, you're going to have to call them up, and they might want you to send it in to do service instead of just sending you parts. They're a smaller company. That's how they roll. RAM is soldered on board. You got 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM on the Razer Blade. Now that's plenty enough for most people, but for those of you who say that's not enough for me, I saw somebody in the YouTube comments section for a view of this saying it's not enough. Well, if you have a way to use 32 gigs of RAM, really use them all, then the XPS 15 would be for you because it has two RAM slots. If you got a hold of two 16 gig DDR4 RAM modules or DIMMs, you can put them in there and go up to 32. Uh, the high-end configuration that sells for around 2,000 comes with 16 gigs of RAM. There's a base model that has just 8 gigs of RAM. So RAM flexibility here and the actual slots that you could change things around. But again, like I said, most people would probably be pretty happy with 16 gigs of RAM. Both of these have socketed wireless cards. And Razer Blade's going to win this one because they use killer wireless AC networking. Th that is just literally killer. It is so good. The reception is so strong on this. The throughput is very good on this. And it, it just it beats the pants off of the Dell. The Dell's decent. The Dell's kind of average. The razor blade is the the one that you want to throw at, at every weak network you come across because it's just going to work. One more point for upgradability, and this, this starts to get maybe confusing for some folks, but with Dell, you have two options. You can get it with just that SSD drive or with also, in addition, a two and a half inch conventional spinning hard drive. If you do that, you get a smaller battery though. It's not room for all of that stuff inside. So we're going to, again, primarily go more with the Dallas high-end offering, which leaves out the spinning hard drive and has the larger 84 watt hour battery versus the like 52 watt hour battery option that you'd have to have if you had a hard drive inside. But for those of you who need to have conventional hard drive or two methods of internal storage, keep that in mind. 
Speaking of batteries, again, the bigger battery is 84 watt hour, the smaller battery is in the low 50s. The Razer battery is 70 watt hour, it's a little bit smaller, they have a bit less room for that, plus they need more robust cooling inside for the more powerful graphics. Now in previous generations, the Dell always won the battery part of this contest. This time around, because of revisions with Intel Skylake and better power efficiency, Razer's actually improved their run times. And using this for productivity and streaming video, the Razer Blade, I'm averaging six to six and a half hours, which is about the same as the XPS 15 high-end configuration with the 4K touchscreen. Again, we're looking at the comparable version, not the 1080p one, and that would get you some better battery life in the Dell. Chargers here, what a similar design, huh? isn't that something? 165 watt charger because the NVIDIA 970M graphics needs more power. This is a 130 watt charger for the Dell it, because 960 requires that much less power. Yet the Razer is somehow a little bit smaller. It's pretty darn impressive. Both of these are pretty small and pretty light. They're close enough in size that I don't think it's going to be of material difference to you. Now for performance, horsepower, what they have inside. Obviously, both PCIe SSDs, both fast drives, in other words, both DDR4 RAM, both Intel Core i7-6700HQ, that is a quad-core 45-watt Intel 6th generation Skylake CPU. All that stuff is the same. The only thing that really sets them apart is the graphics, and this is going to be important, particularly for gamers here. Dell goes with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960M, 2 gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM. That's a pretty common choice for slim and light, higher and 15 inch laptops because it's not a huge power consumer and it's not super duper hot. Now, even gaming laptops, especially, you know, the mid-range kind of prices there, they'll, they'll even use the 960M, perhaps with a bit more VRAM inside. Razer Blade, well, they're a gaming company, so they go high-end. We have the NVIDIA GTX 970M with 6 gigabytes of DDR5 VRAM, so enough to run a whole lot of textures in GTA 5 to drive higher resolution external monitors. Though neither of these is really meant for 4K gaming. Mobile GPUs just aren't really there yet for gaming in 4K with today's most demanding titles anyway. The difference between these in terms of graphics performance can be anywhere from 40 to 70 percent depending on the game or benchmark that you're, that you're running. There really is a great divide between the 960 and the 970. Now you go 970 versus 980, not as much of a divide. And if you go between 950 and 960, there's something of a difference for those of you who are wondering about that too. But it's a real, it's a real line in the sand and higher end gaming laptops have the 970M. And it's a real challenge to put it in something this skinny and light. But Razer's done a real good job with the cooling. They've revised the cooling too. So you, it can handle it. If you are playing demanding 3D games like the Far Cry 4 we're going to show you, you're going to hear the fans roaring and it's going to get toasty. It's going to get above human body temperature, though not hot enough to literally burn you. Likewise, though, the Dell XPS 15 will get hot and will get loud if you're gaming. For both of these, if you're doing productivity tasks, the fans will always be on, but kind of a gentle murmur, nothing that's going to bother you. If you're streaming video, that's not even going to make them work hard. So you're really not going to hear the fans ramp up there. So the heat and noise issue between the two of these is not as far apart as you might guess. Dell does thermal throttle a bit more. If you're really pushing it hard, you know, doing crazy things like running for mark benchmark, something like that, or, well, playing Fallout 4 for hours on end on high settings, I, you'll see the CPU particularly throttle back some on it, and the GPU maintains the speed better. The blade does not throttle thermally. I've been playing games for hours with it now, poor me, and really it does okay. So if you're a hardcore gamer, and you know, both of these right now can play today's most demanding games, well, if you're talking about the Razer Blade on high to ultra, very high to ultra settings, and for the Dell, medium to high settings. So for today's games, if you're okay with sometimes being on medium, the, the Dell is fine. But if you're looking at next year's games, the 970M gives you more future proofing. Uh, obviously, Pascal isn't out, the, the, the mobile version of the NVIDIA 10 
80 and 1070 and so on. That might not be till the end of 2016 before we see it. So until then, in terms of future proofing the blade, if you're a gamer all the way, if you're just doing something like Adobe Premiere Pro video editing, honestly, the 960M is fine. It's going to accelerate things enough there. And just so you can see the difference, we're going to play Far Cry 4 on both of these using the same 1920 by 1080 resolution and the same settings. And you'll see the difference in the frame rates. It's quite marked. So graphics quality, very high in Far Cry 4. Additional quality settings, mostly very high. Pretty good, right? So let's see how this plays. And we have fraps running so you can see the frame rates. And I'm leaving the audio on so you can hear the speakers, which are also pretty good. So here we are. Look at those frame rates, right? Really very good. And let's do it. Oh, Postmaster run just so you can see a little bit of shooting and crazy stuff like that. Hint, it's going to do very well. And those speakers are sounding pretty darn good too, which is a, a good thing. So it can drown out the fan audio. Let's see how stealthy I can be. Whoops. Those are excellent frame rates of these quality settings. All right, we're back again with the Dell XPS 15. Same settings used in Far Cry 4 here, as you can see, as we used with the razor blade. Now, this should have a slight advantage. This is still a Core i7 with a fast PCIe SSD and 16 gigs of RAM, but this is the 1080p display option. Even though we're playing both games at 1080p, the higher resolution display is still driving more pixels, even if it's interpolating them down to 1080p. So let's see how it does. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same stuff that we did, and you can see the frame rate there, Fraps is running in the upper left corner. We're doing this live, real time, it is considerably lower than it was on the Razer Blade, which has the 970M. There's a big difference, folks, see, between the 960 and 970M. Frame rate 31, 32, rather than being 60 on the same settings. A mix of very high and a few high. Oh, hey, I should hide. Oh, that was not nice. Have you seen my big gun? The sound is pretty loud on this. Pause it. Sounds pretty loud on this. A little bit thinner, a little bit less full than the razor blade. So there you go. You can see the difference in gaming prowess. Obviously, the XPS 15 is capable of playing today's most demanding games. You're just going to have to do it at lower settings. And if you're thinking about what happens with next year's games, you'll be more prepared with the 970M. So for those of you who are pretty hardcore gamers, obviously the razor blade is going to win this one. Now, I know you folks always ask me, which one would I pick? And, and this really, in this case, is more a matter of personal preference. It has to do with size and, and how much you're going to be using it for gaming. And I asked the cat, I said, can I have a razor blade, please? Because that's the one that I would pick. I really do value portability, and I do like to play games. And the 970M just really gives me the ability to run at least high settings. And I know next year's games, it's still going to do high. And in fact, now I can push ultra on it. But again... That's me, and that's because I'm interested in gaming and supreme portability. If you want the bigger screen and you're going to use this for pro apps and productivity more, or you want some less expensive build options, Dell might be for you. So there you have it, Dell XPS 15 and the Razer Blade 2016 edition. Both of these, if we're considering the comparable Dell that would be configured similarly to what the Razer Blade's offering, uh, they're, they're both expensive machines. The Razer Blade's still a little bit more expensive. They may have dropped the price by about $400, but uh, the Dell's about $200 cheaper for an equal configuration. Obviously, 
in the end, it depends on what size screen you want, what size laptop you want. In terms of footprints, sure, the XPS 15 is very compact for a 15-inch laptop. It's still bigger than the Blade. Build quality, they're both very good. Razor Blade, a little bit more frou-frou, a little bit more high-end there. If you're a content producer, I say Razor Blade all the way because of the very natural, correct white point, very good color accuracy. The 4K display on the XPS 15 it is shock and awe, yeah, but it's pretty hard to get it where you want it for content creation professionally. Lastly, there's graphics. Obviously, if you're really into gaming, the razor blade all the way. The 970M is a very big jump up from the 960M. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written reviews of each of these products and to chat with me on Discus and watch our video reviews too.